Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin. Tips for navigating the bear market. This is an updated version from the one we put out at the very beginning of this year. So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can find a link to that down in the description below. We will run that sale through the end of the month. Let's go ahead and jump in. So again, this is an updated version from a video that we put out at the very beginning of the year. We provided updates to that video throughout the year, but I just wanted to go through what we talked about that what we talked about back then. We have the, you know, we have the the discussion from back then, what we talked about, how has it held up so far this year, and what are the general implications moving forward. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that and um, and we'll, we'll sort of take inventory on where we stand today. So again, back in February, um, we said cash is king, right? Cash is just simply king. You might as well recognize it because even though inflation is high, even though inflation's high, it doesn't matter. If risk assets are destined to, to trend down, which they likely are, then cash remains king. Even though you might lose some money, you might lose value to inflation, it's better than losing 80 to 90% in, in the crypto market. So that is why we discussed back then that cash is king and that you should, you know, spending 2022 just simply stacking cash rather than just YOLOing into the altcoin market or the crypto market in general is likely going to serve you much better than, than chasing every single bear, mac, bear market rally along the way. And the reason for this is because when 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 asset classes sort of collapse and and they bubbles pop, it takes a long time for for these you know for them to actually get to their final destination. You will have bear market rallies along the way, and and one of the reasons is because the market is really efficient at at making everyone lose money. So even if you are even if you were bearish going into into 2022. You still might you might would have gotten suckered back in because of all these bear market rallies, causing you to sort of question your thesis. Okay, but at the end of the day, we've maintained that cash is king, and we talked about this plenty of times, and we've provided updates to these videos, you know, later on in the year, and and talking about the case for the bears when when Bitcoin was at like 40, 41 k. But I, I do want you to remember that even though there have been plenty of bear market rallies, cash has remained king in twenty twenty two despite high inflation. And furthermore, because interest rates have been going higher due to the hawkish Fed, you can actually earn yield on your cash in CDs, like certificates of deposit, which are relatively boring for most people, but you're still talking about four to five percent yield in in a fairly unrisky in a fairly unrisky way. Whereas going into these bear market rallies, you really don't know how high they're ultimately going to go, and, and you could just continue to get burned all the way down. So that was the first thing we talked about. We also talked about the idea that altcoins are risky, and I, I think this is something that, that people really have a hard time letting go of when you get into these into these more you know cyclical bear markets, is that they're so used to buying the dip on their favorite altcoin that when the altcoin dips and they buy it and then it dips again, they just start to get angry because it's no longer doing what it used to do. But simply speaking, had you listened to, to the Federal Reserve and their goal to raise interest rates and to roll off assets from their balance sheet, there wasn't a clear reason to, to assume that, that altcoins in general were gonna be going on and putting in any new all-time highs for the most part. Now, listen, I always say, there's always a few altcoins that do well in a bear market. There always are a few. Maybe they don't always put in new all-time highs, but some of them will outperform some of the others, and that should at least give you some good indication as to what could do well in the future. The, the coins that have remained somewhat strong perhaps have a brighter future uh, than a lot of the ones that don't. Now, that's not always true. You can still see those coins go to zero, depending on, on what sort of effects come out of, of this contagion that we're currently in, but it is at least one indicator that you can use. And to give you an example, one of the common things I've said is that just because an altcoin has dropped 80% does not mean it cannot drop another 80%. I've said this time and time again, and it's why I have simply refused to acknowledge the, you know, any reason, any great reason to accumulate altcoins, at least so far this year, because it, it just simply has seemed like not a great year for altcoin 
accumulation. One of the one of the things I've said many times is if you're considering buying an altcoin in 2022, you should take a cold shower and reconsider. And the reason is because these bear market rallies have a way of sucking you back into the market only to only to to make you give all your money back once again. One of one one good analogy as I've said before is that imagine we're all standing around a swimming pool and we all have a cup of water in our hands. And the Federal Reserve controls the liquidity in the pool, right? Like if if the water level is high, it's because the Federal Reserve wants it to be high. But if they're draining liquidity from the system, which is what they've done, they've pulled the plug at the bottom of the swimming pool. The liquidity is draining out of the system. Now, after it goes down a certain amount, a lot of investors who are so used to buying the dip will take their cups of water that they're holding, their own liquidity, they'll throw it into the pool. And occasionally, enough people will throw in water, they'll throw in their own liquidity enough at the same time that sometimes the water level will temporarily rise, right? And, and everyone starts to think, oh, things are back to normal. The problem is that the drain is still draining, like the, the water is still draining out of the bottom of the pool because the Fed is still sucking liquidity out of the system. So yes, you can get bear market rallies when people throw in their liquidity, but it doesn't mean that that this bear market rally is going to lead back to to a you know to the pool rising all the way back to where it was at the beginning of the year as long as the Federal Reserve remains hawkish. So that is the point that I, I, I'm trying to make is that yes, we can have bear market rallies because so many people are used to buying the dip, but that doesn't mean they're going to end up anywhere, especially during during the current market, you know, market conditions that we face and 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 this QT rate hiking cycle by the Federal Reserve. So again, as we said back then, alts are risky. And again, because they drop 80% doesn't mean they can't drop another 80%. If we take a few case examples, Solana is down 95% from the all-time high, but it dropped 80% once already. And if you had assumed that, a, that, that Solana was a good buy at $53 just because it was down 80%, well, you're now sitting down another 73, 74%, and it's gone down all the way to another 77% down, which represents an entire drawdown of 95% from the all-time high. It's just simply pure delusion, right? That that people say, well, you know, well, such and such altcoin is holding up well. I see this all the time, like, oh, well, this altcoin's holding up really well because it hasn't gone down this week. But it's like, well, look, I mean, it dropped 40% last week and it's down 95% over the year. So you have to remember, altcoins get absolutely wrecked in bear markets. Absolutely wrecked. I'm not just going to pick on Solana because I, I, I mean, a lot of you guys recognize it's not, it's not one I've really ever made videos on. We'll talk about ones that I have, and and I and I was honest back then in in February that look, altcoins are risky. It goes for the entire altcoin market. You should not marry an altcoin because they get completely wrecked in bear markets. I've experienced it many times in the past. If you go take a look at ADA. It's down 89 to 90%. It's not that much better. I mean, it's down 89 to 90%. Now, if it were down as much as Solana, you'd be talking about 95% down. That would put ADA at around 15 cents. So it's holding up better than that one, but it's still down 90%. I mean, like if you still YOLO'd into ADA every step of the way, maybe you're not as down as, as, as people who went into Solana, but you're still down 90%. I mean, like, you know, are you really going to celebrate about that? Continuing on, you know, Polkadot, another coin, it's also down about 90% from the all-time high, right? So again, in bear markets, altcoins just simply are risky. They're not, in my opinion, they're not really worth it because they can go down so much so quickly and they have a way of just sort of sucking you back into the market. To give you an example of, of something that I did back in, in, in 2018, was that I, I started buying altcoins in Q3, and I've been honest about this. I've been honest about this many times. I started buying altcoins right here because I thought it was a good level because ADA was already down 95%, right? I was like, all right, well, you know, altcoins are down 95%. There's a lot of schmucks out there that, that think that, that crypto is dead. I'm going to come in and, and buy these things down 95%. But guess what? It went down another 60% or so from that level. So who was the schmuck, schmuck in the end, right? It was It was me. In the short term, I mean, yes, it ended up working out, but there's no guarantee this would have happened, right? I mean, we kind of we can think of alternative scenarios where maybe something like that wouldn't have happened. Perhaps if the Federal Reserve hadn't printed trillions of dollars right here, this this bull market would not have happened. But they did, and so it did happen. So we need to be very cognizant of what the Federal Reserve is doing. So as I've said before, altcoins are just simply they're too risky in a bear market 
Doesn't mean you're not gonna make money if you're good at short-term trading, but that's not me. That's not the purpose of this channel. You guys know that. I, I'm, I have no interest in, in trying to figure out when these when these altcoins are gonna see like, you know, you know, pitiful rallies back up to the upside where, you know, you think like, oh, it's up 50%. Yeah, it's still down 80%. Okay, don't fall for these traps. And I will say, I will say this, if you did fall for this stuff, right? If you haven't been saving cash for 2023, if you have been yielding into altcoins the entire way down, I want you to, I want you to know something, right? Everyone goes through it, right? So don't try to feel too bad about it. I've made the same mistakes on more than one occasion, okay? I always remember thinking like in 2014, like, oh gosh, I got fooled. 2018, I got fooled again, right? Fool me once, shim on you. Fool me twice, shim on me. I was like, all right, third time, I'm not getting fooled this time. I'm going to be very risk averse and I'm just going to I'm just going to go the, the cash is king mantra and to take a cold shower when you want to buy altcoins and reconsider because I've seen this story many times before and the ending's always the same. There's always something that that causes it to make it go down. The third thing, support is a meme. These support levels are memes. And I want to talk about that a little bit because um and also, maybe before we get to that, if you go look at a lot of these Bitcoin valuations, they're down a lot. I mean, you know, Solana Bitcoin, despite the fact that Sol USD is down 95%, Solana Bitcoin from its, I mean, if you take it from the all-time high back in September, it's also down 80%, right? I mean, against Bitcoin, it's down 80%. Cardano, or let's say a a Avalanche from its all-time high, is down 70% against Bitcoin. Let's go check out on ADA. You know, how far down is it from its all-time high? It's down 70, 69% or so, 68%. These alts just don't hold up really, really that well in, in these in these bear markets. And you might say, well, you know, one of the most common retorts I see, well, you know, the Bitcoin dominance is still relatively low. Oh, that's true. But this also includes stable coins, my friends. You know, I mean, I, I think a lot of people. Are, are not are not aware that this includes stable coins. So yes, this is low, but most of these altcoins have just been simply losing value against Bitcoin for the entire year. Not all of them, there are a few that have not, but most of them have. And one way to, again, visualize that is to go look at the Bitcoin dominance. Okay, I'm um, let me hide some of this stuff so you can just see this is the Bitcoin dominance, including stable coins. If you exclude stable coins, this is what it looks like. Higher lows all year. Higher lows all year, okay? So the altcoin market has been bleeding to Bitcoin. Uh, it's just not really reflected that well in this metric because it includes stable coins. And so some people have been going back out to the stable coin market. If we get stable coin FUD, you could still see this go up, which I, I think is the is my base case that this will still go up, even including stable coins. Um, I, I do think remains the path of least resistance. It is admittedly taking longer than I thought it would. Uh, but I think part of that is just because there's so much, so much, um, so much more money in, in in a lot of these scam like these a lot of these scams i mean like what happened recently with these exchanges and stuff these are pure scam right i mean i it's hard to even wrap your head around just how 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 bad it is but these things can these things have sort of perpetuated this and and, and i think arguably made it go on a lot longer than it otherwise should have okay so again we say cash is king, alts are risky, supports are memes. And when we talk about why supports are memes, if you think about this last year and think about every time someone told you that such and such price was going to hold and it was the bottom, I mean, I, I was honest with you guys every step of the way that, look, I think we're going to get rejected off the 200 day back here. I said, I think we're, I think Bitcoin's going to get rejected. We're putting in higher lows, but we're likely just going to put in a failure to put in a higher low just like we did in 2018, right? Higher lows, and then we failed to put in a higher low and after the rejection off the 200-day the moving average. So the, the story has been told before. It's playing out in a very similar way as before. And then, you know, you had the people that say that 25K was the bottom. And we still, I mean, it, you know, we, yeah, we went sideways for a month, and then the floor fell out again. And then we had to spend a year, or not a year, maybe half a year, dealing with um, you know 175 as, as people were calling that to be the bottom. But as I said, there were plenty of metrics that that did not support that. And, and one of the most simplest metrics was just simply the, the the drawdown of Bitcoin from the prior all-time high and comparing it to past bear markets, right? Like this is the green line, this is the current bear market. And you know people want to call what happened with FTX a black swan. 
But I'll tell you this, the people that ignore bear market structure and ignore, like just refuse to admit that we're just simply in a bear market, it's delusion. So for, for them, anytime we see a lower price that's lower than what they thought was the bottom, they just say it's a black swan and it couldn't have been predicted, right? Like, oh, no one could have predicted this because, you know, who could have thought? Guys, crypto is, I mean, we've had exchanges in every bear market that were insolvent, I think. I mean, every, like every few years this happens. Now, FTX is admittedly probably the biggest one to occur, but it's not different in the sense of what happened. It's different, in, it's different maybe in the scale um, and, and extent of it, but the, the actual sort of playbook is, is not that dissimilar from, from things that we've seen occur in the past, right? It's just on a different scale. And, and arguably, when these things go down, like we've seen happen this year, like Celsius, uh, like Luna, uh, Three Arrows Capital, Alameda, FTX, this is also an artifact, in my opinion, of the Federal Reserve going with tighter monetary policy. When access to capital was cheap, you know, these, these scams could just get perpetuated indefinitely or for a longer period of time than maybe they otherwise should have. But when the tide goes out and the money ain't cheap anymore, you're going to see which companies are, are, are doing things that are, are not really that great. And, and the companies that are not being honest about, about how they make money um, and, and whatnot. So again, you can call it a black swan all you want. I mean, if you want to call every single event that makes crypto go lower and a bear market a black swan, then yeah, maybe we've had nine black swans. Or you just look at it like, hey, this is a pretty standard bear market. There's always a reason that we can point to to why lower lows happen, but it doesn't mean it's a black swan. It's just an artifact of tighter monetary policy. And I'll say this right now, as long as the Fed continues to remain hawkish and continues to raise interest rates into a slowing economy, and as long as they're rolling off assets from the balance sheet, you could, you could easily see more companies face the same fate. Okay, easily could happen. I don't know which ones, and honestly, I've never, I've never shilled these, these centralized platforms. I've never posted affiliate links to them. I've never done any paid promotions. I don't even have AdSense enabled because I don't want you guys to have to watch these ads to these platforms that will use my channel to reach you because they can target that kind of an audience, right? So I just say, you know what? You can't run ads. Um, no affiliate links. No paid promotions because I, I don't want to, to support this stuff. And I'm not trying to say that, that it's all bad and that no one should ever do it. It's just my opinion, especially as someone based in the United States, is that there's not really proper regulation or guidance for a lot of these centralized platforms. So there's really no telling what's going on behind the scenes because it's, it's so, there's, no, there's not really a whole lot of transparency, right? There's really not that much transparency if you think about it. I think a lot of people just choose not to think about it, but there really hasn't been that much transparency with a lot of these projects. And so when the tide goes out, you see who's affected. Now in the future, when there's more regulation and, and you know, these platforms are, have a lot more transparency about them, you could argue that it's not as risky to promote them, right? But during this still somewhat immature phase of cryptocurrency adoption, it, a lot of these platforms still remain incredibly risky. I have no idea which ones are solvent or not, but I can assure you, I'm not here to find out, right? I'm not here to find out, not with my money. I mean, and, and whichever ones survive, whatever's happening now, whatever ends up going on, those will probably be the platforms that are actually trusted more in the future. So perhaps look to those platforms, whichever ones they might be. I don't know, but look to those. So again, in a bear market, supports are memes right? Every single one. There's always a reason. There's always some black swan that you might want to point to. But at the end of the day, it was, it was, uh, it was a meme in the first place. And, and the idea that all of these were going to just simply be the bottom because you wanted them to be the bottom is just um, dubious at best. Hedge. Four was hedge. So how do you hedge? Well, again, if you're all into crypto, that's not really a great thing. And why? Suppose you have 95% of your net worth in crypto and crypto goes down 95%. You don't want your net worth to go down 95%. If you only have 20% of your net worth in an asset or 10% or 5%, if it drops 80%, like it's going to hurt, but it doesn't completely wipe you out. So you, 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 I think it's important to hedge, right? I mean, whether it's in, in, in the energy sector, uh, commodities in general, like you know, precious metals, you could argue that when the dollar's done, 
Uh, you could see you could see precious metals like gold and silver rally. Healthcare does really well typically in a recession because people still need healthcare even when the you know the economy is not doing that well. Like you're not just going to say, well, I'm not going to go get that treatment because the economy is not doing as well. Generally speaking, people will still seek out healthcare, and so the healthcare area still still does fairly well during recession. So again, hedging is a good thing. I know a lot of people just are, are of this mindset that you have to you have to make as much money as quickly as you can. But listen, interest rates are a lot higher now than they were. We have we have transitioned into into a, a, a like a, a regime that is completely different than what you're used to. Instead of fighting it, instead of fighting the Fed, which I think is is not a good thing, instead of fighting it, just adapt, right? Like just adapt to what the new normal is. And you can you can still be very successful. It's just about recognizing the changing market conditions and and adapting to it rather than throwing all your money away into you know into these random micro cap altcoins in the hopes that it'll it'll go up a lot. When in reality, a lot of them are are just simply slowly dwindling away. Okay, so some altcoins will likely recover, but a lot of them will die. You should know that. Bitcoin and Ethereum are your blue chips as always, but even they're not necessarily done with their own bear market. Okay, so something to consider. And then finally, be patient. Sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all. To sit on the sideline and wait and ignore the bear market rallies, right? Like if you think about it, if you just left crypto in early 2022 and then just checked in in December, you really had missed, you didn't really miss anything in terms of price. I mean, you would have missed out on a few bear market rallies, but there's a good chance you wouldn't have timed those well anyways. So at the end of the day, sometimes just simply being patient is is the way to go and 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 just sort of remembering all these five things. So remember, if if you took some of this advice, I hope, I hope it's worked out well. Um, and I, I think it has. If you didn't, try not to beat yourself up too much about it because a lot of times you just have to learn this stuff on your own. And then once you do, it'll make you a better investor for the future. You, sometimes you just have to you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and continue on and say, you know what? I made a mistake. Um, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have done that, but I'll learn for the future. Now, that sort of brings you, you know, into where are we today? Do, you know, do, do all of these things still apply today? Well, I will say this. I mean, cash is, is, is king. The dollar has done exceptionally well this year. Now, recently it has pulled back uh, significantly from this level. I think the, big, the the biggest question mark for me is, is this going to you know, play out like a uh, early 1980s thing where you, you see some type of massive pullback from 114 to 103, and then it blasts off into the stratosphere as, as people really go risk off out in 2023? Or do we just sort of see a longer term distribution phase over here and then slowly trend back down? I don't fully know yet, honestly. I mean, I, I still do think having cash makes a lot of sense, especially considering most people that watch this channel are very invested in the crypto market and not invested in other asset classes, even though I think it's not a good idea to just be so far into crypto, not financial advice. But my general opinion is that you know, with, with a crypto contagion like we're currently seeing, the crypto market is still likely going to take a while to recover. I mean, even, you know, and I've said this all the time, like, like even if even if the low is close to being in or, or wherever it might be, we're still likely not going anywhere for a long time. It doesn't mean you're not going to have occasional rallies and whatnot, but we still have. Uh, I mean, typically, look at this. After you have a bear market year, you go sideways for a year, right? Bear market and then sideways. Bear market and then sort of sideways. We did have sort of a rally in there, but still mostly sideways. Bear market, 2023 is likely not going to be as bad as 2022 in terms of the down the downside, but there could still be more downside, and we could just go sideways for the entire year, like we've done many times in the past. So, with all that in mind, I don't think having cash is a bad thing. Um, in fact, if you've been using this year to stack cash, I think it actually puts you in a really good position for for next year. When I do think a lot of people who've just been patient can just slowly come in. Figure out what projects they wanna they wanna support. Grab a position in those, and then just wait a couple years, right? That's I mean that's sort of the goal. I do hope that the value that I provide on this channel uh, has been useful. Or at least the, the commentary I provide has been useful. I know I don't get everything right. I don't pretend to. Um, certainly, some things I've I've said do not always come true. But in general, I think the the cash is king mantra, the alt to risky supports or memes, hedge and be patient has been fairly good for 2022. 
and we will see what 2023 will bring us. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up. Also, we do again have that sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to three weekly videos a week, premium videos, a newsletter, trading view indicators, Telegram alerts, channel Telegram chat room, and a website with a ton of stuff on it. You guys see me use it all the time. So make sure you check it out. I still think uh, these points here still provide some value even at these levels, but they're not, I, I mean, they're, they're, they're not as important as they were at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, they, I, I think they had a lot more importance. Today, I still think they carry some importance. Don't get me wrong, right? Uh, but as we, especially as we push out, you know, three months, six months, twelve months, uh, I think the the market will will slowly be shifting gears and and hopefully going in the other direction. But thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.